Welcome to the channel. As I continue to explore my new Quest 3 headset in its pass-through video and how I can use it to enhance my flight simulation experience, I came across a program that I want to share with you today. It's an early beta program from a programmer in Japan which utilizes the same principles as Reality Mixer which I featured in a couple recent videos on pass-through video from the Quest which allows for mixed reality flight simulation. As you can see here, the program allows your hands or controllers to be tracked and creates a pass-through area following each hand. This could be a good solution for a lot of simmers because it doesn't break the immersion very much and it puts the visibility of the real world right where you need it as you reach out. It avoids a lot of fumbling under the headset and eliminates most needs to take the headset off. So stick around if you want to learn more about this. And I've got some good news for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 users at the end. Well, I first saw this on a posting on X, and it took me to this website, which was in Japanese. And thanks to Google Translate, I was able to uh, read it and download the uh, freeware uh, to start using it. One of the uses that was demonstrated, as you can see, by the developer was the ability to eat when you have your headset on and see what you're eating. Well, just like Reality Mixer on my last two videos, this does require the use of SteamVR and the virtual desktop, which offers the color matching pass-through where you can pick a chroma key color and have that color show the pass-through instead of the VR world. Since this is early beta software, you have to download the zip file, decompress it, and launch it from your desktop. And then you can open the interface from the console of uh, SteamVR, and you can adjust the size of the right and left yes. by moving their respective sliders. You can see uh, there is left and right, and there's a numerical value there. And then you can, uh, and these are not saved between sessions yet. And then you can disable. Possibly if you're flying, you want your left hand on the uh, stick and your right hand on the throttles. Uh, you might not want one on the yoke there. So you could turn that one off. There's also check boxes for the sound effects and the haptics, and also a uh, color picker. Now I found these values didn't agree with the values that I had set in the desktop, but I was able to play with them and find a value that would make the uh, pass-through clear. So uh, those maybe are off a little bit, but they still worked quite well. So once I got in the air with this, I was amazed at how well it worked. It was very easy to use, uh, just to move my hands around and uh, I would reach in the general direction, but I could uh, actually see buttons on controls. If you had an autopilot control or something like that, you could reach up and make inputs. And then your hands are mostly out of view. I'm using this square aspect ratio because it gives you a better idea of what is actually in the frame of the headset. But most of the time, the hands are out of view, so you don't even notice them. So it doesn't break the immersion. And when you do reach up, it's only a short time, and it sure beats taking the headset off. It really is simple to set up to, and there's no calibration of the, of the real world and the virtual world because it's just your hands that are being tracked. So it uh, takes care of that. It's easy, quick. The price certainly is right, too, so uh, at a free download. Uh, now, the hand gesture that they chose to switch between hand tracking and controller tracking is to hold your hands up and hold them in a and it converts back over to the controllers. And then to undo that, you do the same thing, and it should switch back. However, uh, I found this to be kind of uh, uh, difficult because you gotta use both hands. It would make more sense to have like a snap of the fingers of one hand or some one hand gesture to make the switch over because most time when you're flying, you're gonna have one hand on the uh, flight yoke most of the time. I would hope as this matures, there would be the ability to use a joystick button or some other control or the controllers to, uh, to activate and deactivate the pass-through circles. I will warn you that since this is beta software in a very early stage, uh, you need to be willing to uh, uh, overlook some, some pimples on this at first. Currently, uh, I had some troubles with the tracking occasionally, and also uh, when I switched back and forth from hands 
uh, to controllers. I was having difficulty sometimes using the mouse too. I'm not sure exactly. I didn't have enough time to really test it in detail. But I did want to get this out for everyone to see. And uh, I did find that it was, uh, it, it has a lot of potential. Now I think Reality Mixer might be able to do this same thing with the controllers, but I don't know if it'll support hand tracking. And I'll be looking into that and reporting Landing on that gear. in the future. Always looking for another way to make VR flying a little bit better and more realistic Autopilot. and have more training value. Now I know I told you in the last video that I didn't believe this was possible with Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I decided to try it with this app and guess what, it worked. I got it all set up. Uh, I purchased Microsoft Flight Simulator for Steam VR and launched it. And to my uh, amazement, this worked. So I'm using the controllers here instead of hand tracking. Works the same way. And as you can see, uh, it's compositing the images just fine. Uh, we have uh, the pass-through video tracking with the trackers or uh, the controllers and with uh, hands also and uh, this was really surprising to me but it get told told me that this may be possible to use the reality mixer too and I just didn't know what I was doing I'm new to Steam VR I never used it much before this and uh, new to the Quest 3 so I decided to give that a try well this is a surprise well needless to say I was quite overjoyed when I found out that I could bring reality mixer panel pass-through into Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And as you can see, and I just have a rough panel set up here using a couple of boxes, and if you haven't seen my previous videos, check those out to understand a little better what's going on here. But you can see the, uh, I just put a random Cessna panel up on my little 15.6 inch monitor, and you can see my keyboard throttles and yoke uh, in my hands and my trackball on my knee and so on. So as I said in my previous videos, uh, the technology is moving fast and this, uh, the presence of the Quest 3 with its reasonable price and pass-through videos pushing uh, things faster and we're excited to see what's going to happen. I'll be keeping my eye out for the latest developments of any kind of software that we can use and we're going to have to hope that some developers will see videos like these and others and realize there's value there and that we need to uh, have some software that can bring this uh, technology into the cockpit. I thank you for watching this video. If you like these videos, if you want to stay uh, up on what's going on, I'm going to keep watching for Mixed Reality. As you know, I'm a bit obsessed with it. So uh, if you would uh, just subscribe and click the notification bell, you'll know when I put out a video. Also, uh, be sure to uh, share with your friends, like, and uh, I'd love to see your comments about this and any ideas that you have and other applications you might know about that I haven't spotted yet that might help us to make this better. I know Vario Labs has a great program. Uh, unfortunately, it comes with a high price, and I'm hoping there'll be some grassroots uh, effort out there to bring better chroma key and masking into uh, this Quest 3 for those who uh, want to get involved in a little lower price. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.